good morning class 7 welcome to the online classes today we will be having the first class of history we will be reading the chapter tracing changes through a thousand years before we begin just i want to just tell you that in class 6 you must have read about the ancient history this is the second phase that is a transition phase and here we will be studying about the medieval period let's begin with the chapter here we are you are going to study about how the cartographers that is the people who make maps they started making maps how the voyagers they started coming from different nations to different countries visiting there for trade or for other purposes so let's begin the chapter take a look at map 1 and 2 map 1 was made in 1154 CE that is common era or commonly known as AD by the Arab geographer Al Idrisi. The section reproduced here is a detail of the Indian subcontinent from his larger map of the world. Map 2 was made in the 1720s by a French cartographer. The two maps are quite different even though they are of the same area. In Al Adrisi's map, South India is where we would expect to find North India and Sri Lanka is the island at the top. So you must have understood that the map which Al Adrisi had made is little different from the map which you see nowadays. His speciality was that he made the maps upside down. So, and the places which are marked on the map, they are written in Arabic language. And obviously, you will find it very different because the place which has to be like, or like for example, South India, it, we expect it to be where we now find North India. Okay, so there are some well-known names like Kannauj in Uttar Pradesh spelt in the map as Q-A-N-A-U-J. Map 2 was made nearly 600 years after map 1, during which time information about the subcontinent had changed considerably. This map seems more familiar to us and the coastal areas in particular are surprisingly detailed. This map was used by European sailor and merchants on their voyages. So you must have seen that there is a difference between the map which was made by Al Idrisi and the map which was made 600 years after map 1. You can very much relate to the second map and see that lot of similarities are there in map 2 with the map which we see nowadays. This was the map which was used by the sailors from Europe or even the merchants when they visited India and the nearby areas for the trade purposes. Look at the areas in the interior of the subcontinent on map 2. Are they detailed as those on the coast? Follow the course of river Ganga and see how it is shown. Why do you think there is a difference in the level of detail and accuracy between the coastal and inland areas in this map? So you can now understand the difference between both the maps, although it was made long time after the first map was made, that is 600 years. So obviously things have changed. The mindset had changed of the people and lot of other changes have also taken place. Fine. Now let's see. Equally important is the fact that the science of cartography differed in the periods. When historians need read documents, maps and text from the past, they have to be sensitive to different historical backgrounds. The context 
in which information about the past was produced so these things were kept in the mind when the cartographers made different uh, the maps in different periods although few things were kept into consideration that is the background that is the different historical backgrounds and the context and whatever and why these maps were made new and old terminologies if the context in which information is produced changes with time what about language and meanings historical records exist in a variety of languages which have changed considerably over the years medieval persian for example is different from modern persian the difference is not just with regard to grammar and vocabulary the meanings of words also change over time this you can very easily understand why if you have read the original stories written by shakespeare you will un- you will see that the english which was used by shakespeare was very much different from the english which we use nowadays the lo- the words there are certain words in shakespearean language which are non existent now we are not using those terminologies in present context same ways they are talking about the changes from medieval persian to the modern persian or if you talk about different languages take the term hindustan for example today we understand it as india the modern nation state when the term was used in the 13th century by minhas isaraj a chronicler who wrote in persian he meant the areas of punjab haryana and the lands between the ganga and yamuna he used the term in a political sense for lands that were a part of dominions of the delhi sultan the areas included in this term shifted with the extent of the sultanate but the term never included south india by contrast in the early 16th century babur used hindustan to describe the geography the fauna and the culture of the inhabitants of the subcontinent as we will see later in the chapter this was somewhat similar to the way the 14th century poet amir khosro used the word hind while the idea of a geographical and cultural entity like india did exist the term hindustan did not carry the political and national meanings which we associate with it today so here you can they have given us the example of the word hindustan we call it hindustan in present context as well but with a different perception but when it was first time used by minhas isaraj who was a chronicler chronicler is a person who writes about the pres- uh, like uh, time when he was there the scenario about the ruler about the empire where he was ruling the condition of the people etc so he wrote in persian and he mentioned according to him hindustan was the area of punjab haryana and the land between the ganga and yamuna he used this term that is hindustan to to, uh, to tell the world that but here he excluded the part that is the south india it was just that much area which was under the control of delhi sultanate the mamluks when whereas when we talk about the medieval period when babur or the uh, moguls were ruling india they termed hindustan to describe they have used this term to describe the fauna and the culture of the people living in the subcontinent but if we proceed further and we call it like about talk about the 14th century when the poet amir khosro has used it in his poems the idea of here he is trying to tell us the geographical condition and the cultural entity about india so in all the three places where hindustan has been used it has 
altogether different meanings from the meaning which we have in present context. Historians today have to be careful about the term they use because they meant different things in the past. Take for example a simple term like foreigner. It is used today to mean someone who is not an Indian. Okay, so we all are very much familiar with the term foreigner. When we talk about foreigners, we, want, we mean that somebody who is living not in our uh, culture, a lot like who is not belonging to our culture, who is different from the way and uh, his living style is different from the living style of us. The medieval period, a foreigner was same way as a stranger who appeared to say in a, give, in a given village, someone who was not a part of that society or culture. In Hindi, the term Pardesi might be used to describe such a person and in Persian, Ajnabi, a city dweller, therefore, might have regarded a forest dweller as a foreigner, but two peasants living in same village were not foreigners to each other, even though they may have had different religious or caste backgrounds. So, if we talk about the foreigners in Hindi, we use the term Pardesi and in Persian, we call that person as an Ajnabi. Here they have given us the example of a person who is living in a city, for him, a person who is living in a forest is a foreigner. But if to we talk about two farmers who are living in the same village, but they have their re different, re they belong to different religion, they have different caste, but still they are from the different backgrounds, but still they will not be termed as the foreigners. Historians and their sources. Historians use different types of sources to learn about the past depending upon the period of their study and the nature of their investigation. Last year, for example, you read about rulers of Gupta dynasty and Harshwardhan. In this book, we will read about the following thousand years from roughly 700 to 1750. So here they are talking, telling us about what you have read in the previous year, yeah, that is in your class 6. You have studied about the Gupta dynasty, about Harshwardhan and how the historians have studied about that time. You will notice some continuity in the sources used by historians for the study of this period. They will rely on coins, inscriptions, architecture and textual record for information. But there is also considerable discontinuity. The number and variety of textual records increased dramatically during this period. They slowly displaced other types of available information. Through this period, paper gradually became cheaper. So, the way historians have been studying history, it is very much similar. In past also, they have been studying, they are getting the information from coin, from the inscriptions, from the architecture built in that time period or the textual record that is the books written in that period. So this was continued even in the modern era or in the medieval era as well. Although the value of paper, we can see that it is a comparison. In the middle of the 13th century, a scholar wanted to copy a book, but he did not have enough paper. So he washed the writing of a manuscript. He did not want dried the paper and used it. A century later, if you bought some food in the market, you could be lucky and have the shopkeeper wrap it for you in some paper. So you can see the difference. In 13th century, a scholar wanted to write something, but he was short of paper. He was not having it. So what he did was he used the previous manuscript, washed it, dried it and used it. But if you talk about 
a century later that is in 14th century or later on people went to the market to purchase something and the shopkeeper wrapped the thing in the paper and then gave it to the customer. So you can see the difference in the availability of the paper. Let us continue. So it was easily available. People used to write holy text chemicals of rule, uh, chronicles sorry chronicles of rulers letters and teachings of saints petition and judicial records and for registers of account and taxes manuscript were collected by wealthy people rulers men, uh, monasteries and temples they were placed in libraries and archives the manuscripts and documents provided a lot of detailed information to historians but they are also difficult to use so we can say that in the previous time the his whatever was being written it was people used to write the uh, like the holy text the uh, life cycle the life history of a ruler their letters sometimes the teaching of the saints the judicial records and all that and at times the manuscript, manuscript is a handwritten document. All these was kept in the libraries and the archives. This is very much similar to what we do today. If you visit a government office nowadays also, you will see that they have kept all the records in the form of the files. Same way it was done in the ancient times or in the medieval periods as well. There was no printing press in those days. So, scribes copied manuscripts by hand. If you have ever copied a friend's homework, you would know that this is not a simple exercise. Sometimes you cannot read your friend's handwriting and are forced to guess what is written. As a result, there are small but significant differences in your copy of your friend's work. Manuscript copying is somewhat similar. As the scribes copied manuscript, they also introduced small changes, a word here, a sentence there. This is something which we often face nowadays also. If you have, if you are absent for a day or two and you take help from your friend, you have to copy the answers from his copy. Sometimes his writing is not comprehensible. So, according to the sentence, you make assumptions. And according to your assumption and presumption, you write the word what you feel is appropriate there sometimes it changes the complete meaning of the sentence and this is what happened during those days the scribes that is the people who were writing those manuscripts in different languages sometimes they were not able to read what was written in the manuscript so according to the sentence what they did was they tried to understand the meaning of it and frame that reframe the sentences these small differences grew over centuries of copying. You can see the figure 1 here, a painting of a scribe making a copy of manuscript. This painting is only 10.5 cm by 7.1 cm in size. Because of its size, it is called a miniature. Miniature paintings were sometimes used to illustrate the text of manuscripts. They were so beautiful that later collectors often took the manuscripts apart and sold just the miniatures. So what happened was like you can see this painting was very small in size. And what the people was used to do was like sometimes the collectors they just tore off these miniatures from the sheer from the books and they sold these miniatures separately from the manuscripts and this miniature is something which means very small in size miniature that is the small painting so i hope i am clear till here if anybody has any query you can call or uh, you can easily ask uh, ask me on my whatsapp number which you have it
so some of the text became substantially different from one another this is a serious problem because we rarely find the original manuscript of the author today we are totally dependent upon the copies made by later scribes as a result historians have to read different manuscript versions of the same text to guess what the author had originally written so what happens is like sometimes the text obviously with when they have written whatever they have understood so sometimes it became completely different from what was there in the original script and we can say that yes it's a serious problem and sometimes we rarely we do not have the that opportunity to find the original manuscript so we are dependent on the manuscript which has been copied by the later scribes as a result what happens sometimes historians read different versions of the manuscript because different scribes have written the manuscript in their own version so it is difficult to make out which one is the original or which is the exact me which has the exact meaning of the original manuscript on occasion authors revise their chronicles at different times the 14th century chronicler Ziauddin Birni wrote his chronicle first in 1356 and another version 2 years later the two different differ from each other but historians did not know about the existence of the first version until the 1960s it remained a lost in large library collection so here we are talking about Ziauddin Birni he was a chronicler in the time of feroz tughlaq and he had written in the 14th century he wrote the first chronicle in 1356 and another two versions another version of it in just after 2 years and people were not aware that he had written one chronicle before also because they had got the second version initially until 1960s when they found the original or the first version in the library so what we have studied today is about the different types of map that was the two uh, two types of map first one was made by the arab al idrisi and the second one by a french cartographer in 1720 the difference between the map is that the map which al idrisi made was upside down and the second map which we feel which we find of the french cartographer is the very much familiar to the map which we see nowadays then we talked about the chronicler menhaj siraj who was present in the mamluks time and was a chronicler then we have discussed about ziauddin birni he was the he was present in the time of feroz tughlaq and his we have discussed the uh, different meanings or the terms which has evolved with time so to that to know this much we have studied today that is all for the class today we will be continuing in the next period till then please go through the chapter once again if you have any queries you can individually contact me on my whatsapp number i will be sorting out your issues after we have after this uh, chap this chapter i'll be giving you the exercise i hope you will be doing the assignment because you will be marked on it and do take care of yourselves be safe be at home thank you class